Okay, hello. And now we are going to talk about Brittany and Marcelino on Life After Lockup, Season 14, Episode 2. Okay, if y'all give me a little second to get to where I need to get. All right, the show opens up with Brittany putting the kids to bed and saying that um, Marcelino or telling the kids, you know, daddy's not home. And then while Brittany is sitting in the, uh, she goes downstairs and sits in like the, like the dining type living room area. And she says she hasn't seen him in seven hours since he picked up or since he dropped off the kids at her, um, real estate showing. She also lets us know that her and Marcelino are not having sex and she wants to know who he might be doing it with. Um, she kind of hinted on to this last episode, so now we're we're starting to dig into it. He comes home, and she asks him, where has he been? And then he just says the infamous, out. If you're in a relationship and a person's, if you ask him where you, well, let's be honest right now. Brittany did ask Marcelino in a confrontational way, where have you been? And Marcelino matched her energy and was like, out. So the way she asked and the way she he answered was actually both wrong. So it just created dissension right off. He knew a fight was coming and then it was on. And pretty, what, right away she was uh, asked to see his phone and he gave it to her. And then he's like, what are you looking for? What do you expect to find in my phone? And then we see that Brittany has found some naked pictures and some porn. And Brittany in her confessional, she's like, um, I don't mind the porn. She's like, I like, well, we clearly know you're okay with naked women. She's like, basically, I'm good with it, but we should be watching that together. So then she kind of flips out on Marcelino and she's like, you'd rather watch this porn instead of looking at and touching me. And she's like, oh, it's breaking my heart. You're tearing me apart. And honestly, in this scene, I felt like Brittany went over the top. I mean, she's like, he's tearing your part and breaking your heart because he's watching porn instead of having sex with you. The reaction was, when you look at Brittany's history and what she's gone through, which is unbelievable. And, and no, no, excuse me, not unbelievable like she's lying. I believe what happened to her. Let me, let me be clear. But it's unbelievable in the sense of it's so bad what she went through. That's what I mean. Like, it's unbelievable. Like, it's unbelievably horrible. Brittany missed some things in her. She knows how to survive. But some of the adult and growing up, grown up type of things, she's still missing. Or still kind of has missed or still has to kind of get used to. Her saying that he's breaking her heart because he's watching porn instead of having sex with her. That is a really like, I don't want to say childish, but it's a emotionally immature reaction to that. She didn't find naked pictures of women he knows. She didn't find pornography of him with another woman. It's regular stuff. And I think another thing that people don't understand or not people women is that women we think men are just these sex dogs like all they want to do is have sex 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 to a degree that's true but if you're sitting here fussing about a man and going off on a man men get that will make a man's penis shrivel up men do not actually enjoy hearing all that fussing and sometimes women think i can do all this fussing and he'll still want to have sex no Men start to get turned off, even though they're very sexual, even though they very much enjoy sex. It starts to turn men off when women do a, a lot of yelling and fussing. And Brittany might actually be justified in it, but it doesn't. But it, it's a turn off. But as I said in the other last week, we will find out that it actually is more so because of the three way. Like I predicted, the three-way really made him look at the relationship different. But we'll get into that in a minute. Oh, but, but just in case I don't say it later, Brittany did say they were growing apart before that, but Marcelino seems to think that's when the problem occurred. 
So let's see. And I just kind of made this little side note. Has It's not directly something I saw, but just an observation. I think Marcelino and Brittany have a crippling codependent relationship. I think Marcelino, I, I think I remember, I remember from season one, him talking about maybe some PTSD. And then Brittany has PTSD from the life she's led. And I think those two clung to each other. And some of her reactions to him are a bit emotionally immature. And some of his reactions are emotionally immature. And they, but they are codependent on each other, but they don't know how to process things in a correct adult way. So that's what I'll say about that. So later on in the episode, we see Brittany and Marcelino in a therapist's office. Yo, I'm still not on camera. You should see me right now. I look like it's just not cute. I'm over the uh, consumption. I'm well now, but I'm just not looking quite right. So I have to not appear on camera again. Yes, so me. If y'all watch my other videos, you saw me on camera a few days ago. So it's not that I just don't appear on camera, but I took my hair down. It's all over my head. I'm not decent. So you just don't want to see this. <laughs> but uh, hopefully next week. But anyway, on to the back to the review. So fast forward, Marcelino and Brittany are in the therapist's office. And then the therapist is like, what brings you here? Marcelino says, well, I'm here because she brought me here. He doesn't. Um, I don't know if you noticed last week when he said, I'm taking care of my children. I'm about to go take care of my son. Like. Ugh, I don't know what that's called when men like. Women do it, too, but I'm not used to hearing a man do it. I'm used to hearing women do that thing where they like. I don't know what that's called, what he's doing. It's problematic when he does that. I just don't know what it's called. But anyway, on back to the therapy session. While they're in a therapy session, Marcelino goes to spilling his guts. He, um, I'm going to read my note here. Oh, yeah, my, my earpiece is not, oh, it's completely wrapped in the wrong place around my neck. Sorry, y'all. Okay, y'all. Sorry about that. I have to just, I have to get my earpiece straight. Okay, so here's, here's what I put. He goes on to talk about everything he does in the household to the therapist, from putting clothes on the kids' backs, cooking and cleaning, so she can have a career. And then uh, additionally, I put in my notes, I'm missing something. Isn't her, her real estate career paying the bills? And if he's at home all day cooking and cleaning, how's the money coming in? So basically, when Marcelino was talking to the therapist, he was like, I do all this stuff to make it happen for our household. And that's good. But all the things Marcelino was describing don't bring food in the house. All the things Marcelino was describing don't pay the bills. So he was saying so she can have a career as if he doesn't understand that the career pays bills. But again, is she making money from real estate? Like, what am I missing here? Because it's like his brain is disconnected that her career is money that pays the bills so that he can be stay at home. Because it's very important in my this is off topic. But in my opinion, it's extremely important for one parent to be able to be home from the time a kid from the time a child is born to five or six. I don't think children should be in daycare. I think daycare is dangerous. I think kids can get so much stuff from daycare. I think kids are not monitored properly in daycare. I think staff is overworked and underpaid and they take out their frustrations on children. The thought of having a child in daycare, which I've had to do, is horrifying. And if y'all, if one of y'all can be home instead of your child going to daycare, you just got to sacrifice that because you laid down without a prophylactic and had the child. And it's very important to, to have have in those early years be with one, mainly the, whichever parent so that they can be safe. But whatever. That's just my little thought about that. I just I don't know. The sacrifice is worth it for your kids that you laid down and had. But um, as they're going over the therapy session, Marcelino goes on to pretty much say that he's overwhelmed with the life that he signed up for. He's gotten his lady pregnant twice. He punched out Britney's baby daddy. Uh oh, y'all. Yeah. Oops. He punched out Britney's baby daddy. 
uh, but the baby daddy was already back on drugs. It's like Brittany got out of prison. Y'all remember Brittany's baby daddy from the, that cute little baby boy. Uh, Brittany's first. Actually, y'all know Brittany has two other prior children. Oh, gosh. They'll probably show up next season. But that the the little, little guy that we first met in the first season, that adorable boy. I totally forgot his name. That baby is so precious. He's got to be probably six years old now. But um, it's like as soon as uh, Brittany got out of prison, the, the, the dad just lost control and relapsed. So Marcelino went from not having cuss. Marcelino went from Marcelino and Brittany went from visiting the child that Brittany had with that ex to the ex relapsing and all of a sudden Marcelino had a, this child in the house and then I'm sure he was you know of course ready to take responsibility but I don't think he would I, I don't think he was I'm sure he stepped up to his responsibilities is what I meant to say but I don't think Marcelino ever even intended on becoming a full-time stepfather to that child to be honest then Brittany got pregnant somewhere in between there. Then she supposedly accidentally got pregnant again. And these two were moving like two people that didn't understand how life works. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll make a point about that, about the birds and the bees, about Mar Marcelino. I had a point I made. So let me go back to, to my notes. Okay, my notes I put. I'm, yeah, I keep going. I'm going back to uh, season one. Because it relates to where things are now. And I put in season one, Marcelino dang near S, S assaulted Brittany in that shower when we first met them back in season one. Y'all remember, go back to that episode. And I put my notes. I said, if you don't believe me, go back and watch the first season when they uh, were in that shower. The way Brittany described the intimate uh, encounter, it sounded pretty rough. And it sounded like, it didn't sound like he straight out did that. I'm not saying that, but it sounded like Marcelino uh, was very sexually aggressive. And not in any kind of illegal way, but, and I'm just saying, Mar and I don't even think he, uh, I don't know if they mentioned them using anything or, or whatever. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm getting totally off track. I'm saying all this to say Marcelino wanted Brittany real bad. He waited for her to get out of prison. He got Brittany. He got what he wanted. He repeatedly got her pregnant. And now he's overwhelmed by the life that he aggressively seeked out. Remember them talking about him being in front of the jail or across from the jail waving and she could see him from the window and he just desperately wanted Brittany, and he got her. He wanted those kids. He got them. Now he just like, I don't know what he thought that was going to be. A lot of times, though, people have a fantasy about kids and family, and it's not what you think it is. Once you, The reality of it is, is shockingly different. So, But that's what it is. Okay, and then I put... Well, I already kind of said this. I said, apparently, Marcelino doesn't understand the birds and the bees. He needs to go back to class on that. Because when you inseminate somebody without a barrier method, they get pregnant. So they already had her, her first little boy that ended up staying with them. And then clearly there was no barrier method. She got pregnant. And then they were overwhelmed and then had another baby. That's on purpose. That's not a... Well... Anyway, let, let, let me leave that alone because kids are a blessing and I'll be quiet and I hope and I hope things have improved by now. And let me see. OK, and in the side interview, Marcelino is basically saying that the therapist is just talking nonsense and he doesn't know them. Well, excuse Mr. Therapist for just doing his job. Y'all came to him. And from what I saw on the inter in the uh, therapy session, Marcelino was pouring out his heart to the therapist. So for him not to know you, you sure was uh, you sure was telling him everything about you and you being overwhelmed and spilling your guts out to him. Well, and he is right. The therapist doesn't know him. He doesn't know y'all had a three way. He, he or if I I don't know if they told the therapist that or not. I don't think they did. There's a big piece of this that the, that the therapist is missing. 
that if he knew the facts, he could probably provide them with better guidance. And let's see. And I wonder if I put about the threesome. Oh, Marcelino made a big comment about that. He said during the threesome, it was quite obvious that his wife was not as, as into him as she was the girl. And that's when a change happened and his feelings changed. He saw his wife being more sexually attracted to the woman in their bed than her own husband from his point of view. But he, boy, I don't hear a lot of threesome situations making things turn out for the best. I hear more stories about things going terribly wrong from bringing another person in your bed than things in and up right. Usually the one, the other spouse starts sneaking around and sleeping with the person. It's all these bad things come out of threesomes. Um, I made some more notes, y'all. I'm just going to read all my notes because I don't know how to break up all my thoughts. I, I shoved them all together. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to just read it all out. Another part of me thinks it will be easier if he, he being Marcelino, could deal with, this is kind of a jump on topic. I'm jumping kind of somewhere else with this. Another part of me thinks it will be easier. It would be easier, easier if Marcelino could deal with drug addicted Brittany and be the hero to her. Like I said last week, he thought he was going to be the hero and she had done a lot of the pulling herself out of the hole by herself. Brittany is putting some of her insecurities on Marcelino. And that's my opinion. I feel like some of her insecurities she has have nothing to do with him, but she's blaming him for them. And then I go on to say in my notes, on another note, why are we pretending like we haven't been watching Brittany do freaky shit, freaky side shit with another woman for almost two or three years? How do you think that makes a man feel in the end? Marcelino has seen the videos. He's seen the past seasons of things he didn't know about till afterward. That stuff crept up in him and is eating him alive. Whether he's honest with her or not, it has slowly started to eat away at him. The things he's been seeing his wife do, the excitement she has in her eyes for women that he doesn't see that she has for him. Yeah, that's going to make a man not as attracted to you when he's sees how much more you are attracted to, to women, how much more how much more giddy you get in a woman's presence than his. Uh yeah, that will make your husband over time become less attracted to you. This has been going on with her and a little side stuff with the women for years. That has not Marcelino seems to be more of a traditional person and I really do think that that's eating away at him and affected his attractive his his um attraction level to his wife. It's not the way she looks. It's him seeing that his wife might be more is bisexual, but more might be leaning more toward lesbianism than being heterosexual. So let me read this last part. Um, he initially participated in that threesome because his love. I'm sorry, because his lust got the best of him. But in the end, his heart and emotions couldn't handle that. So I think that's why he's not attracted to her. It's not about her body necessarily, I don't think. It's about him in his heart. He has come to believe, not overnight, over a certain amount of time, for one, not feeling appreciated. He's probably feeling like the woman of the house now. Instead of the man because he's taking care of the kids. So that's hitting his belly go. Then you've been watching your wife for two years getting giddy and excited over women. And you as a man viewing it as probably more excited over them than you. That's been chipping at his manhood. So this none of this happened overnight. I don't believe it's about the way she looks. I don't necessarily believe it's a ton to do with the real estate career. But... I think it's just a combination of just her things she's been doing with women and him not feeling like a man because he's now daddy, daddy daycare and that's chipping away at his manhood. So I think that's what it is. But, um, they both have some emotional immaturities about themselves. 
um, and I believe PTSD. So let's see where things go over the course of the season. But uh, thank you for watching. Until next week, um, Brittany and Marcelino's story. Okay, bye.